Hello everyone and welcome to Coffee with Me and Jesus. We have been going through the book of Matthew and we have been uh, understanding more in depth the teachings and discipleship that Jesus has come for that he did not come to take away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. So what Jesus is using is many stories, parables, uh, any sort of instrument he can use to uh, make things clear so we get a full understanding of what is written. And right now we're in chapter 7 and Jesus is talking and teaching and discipling about judgment. And Jesus is saying that, number one, judge not that ye be not judged. And in the little commentary it has in Ezekiel 16.52, before you start judging your brother or, or your sister, you need to judge yourself because your sin is probably way worse when you're operating out of this spirit of judgment towards another person. And then in Luke uh, 637 when you're operating out of a judgmental spirit you should not judge because you're going to be judged in that like in that same manner and you shouldn't condemn because you're going to be condemned as well and when you forgive God will also forgive you and so what God is saying here through Jesus Christ is there's this spirit of a judgment and when you're walking out of the light, you're walking in darkness, you have chose not to make Jesus your Lord and Savior, you're still in the dark, and you're going to judge. People that are in that state of being are judging. Now, people that have chosen to walk in the light and accept the truth of God and uh, read and uh, study the word, they are children of the light. And so when they go to correct some, uh, say somebody that's walking in darkness, that person in darkness takes that just as judgment. And just like Satan did, he wants to flip it and say, well, you can't judge me. The word of God says, judge not or you're not going to be judged. Well, see, they only take that little piece. They're not really taking the full understanding of what God is really imparting to us through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, that people who walk in light are correcting brothers and sisters, and people of the dark. And when a person that is walking in the light corrects another brother and sister, that person will receive it as correction, not judgment, because it truly is being given in correction once you understand this teaching. But if you are still even a child of the light and walking in the darkness because you have not a full understanding of what the word of God says, you are going to be judging and that person is going to take it in judgment. That's why the, in Luke it says, don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiving, forgiven. But Jesus here is, is taking and opening our understanding so that as brothers and sisters, we don't judge, but we can we correct. We correct one another, and if we truly correct in love, then it will be perceived just as that, a correction, not a judgment. And people that do walk in darkness, they don't have any idea what correction is. All they know is judgment, judgment, judgment from another Christian, another believer of the Word of God. And that is why it is spoken in Proverbs uh, chapter 9, verse 7 and 8. When you, cor when, uh, when you correct a scorner, that scorner is going to turn right back to you and he's going to try to impart shame on you. And when you correct a wicked man, he's going to really try to, to blot out your name, give put a bad name about you. So be prepared, people. To, that when you see a wrong in another person, that you as a child of God truly go in in a spirit of love and you correct them. You don't go in this spirit of judgment. It is written, thou shalt not, because that is judgment. And when you go in judgment, you're bringing judgment back on yourself. And we all know that we fall short of the glory of God. So we're imparting judgment and condemnation on ourselves. So that is a very, very important lesson that we need to receive this 
this morning. And by faith, I'm believing that you are receiving that. And then Jesus, he goes on and he's now giving us principles and understanding and knowledge about ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Well, God is saying through Jesus Christ that anything you ask me for, I'm going to give it to you. But don't ask me wavering back and forth. Don't ask me thinking, well, maybe I'll get it and maybe I won't get it. Because you won't get it. Because he says, you have the surety in you because it is written, whatever you ask, you shall receive. And then the next part is whatever you seek, once again, you shall find. And the little commentary on the side again, it says in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, when you pray, you've got to believe. You've got to believe that whatsoever you desire, you are going to receive. And then in James 1, 6, it says, ask without... <clears throat> And doubting, and that again correlates with do not be um, <clears throat> wishy-washy in your faith and in your belief that whatsoever you ask, you're, you're going to receive. That is, whether it's a maybe, no, you be sure, because it is written that way. Remember when Jesus had his battle with, say, with Satan? He didn't listen to all the other stuff, and he didn't get caught up in what he saw. He just said, it is written. It is written. And that's when we ask. It is written. Whatever you're asking for, I'm sure it will line up with the word of God. And that's where you're going to stand and not be moved. You're not going to go, well, it looks this way, but it looks this way. Maybe yes, maybe no. No, you're going to stand because it is written. Now, one thing that God was so, I love when you rightly divide the word because God imparts knowledge upon knowledge upon knowledge upon knowledge to those who seek out his truth and his writings and his word. And when I read, I said, I understand, Lord, the asking, and I understand, Lord, the seeking, but what about this knocking? I, I, I can't get a visual on it. I'm knocking at the door, and it'll be open. Well, what door am I knocking at? Well, God, he took me to this, the little... Um, commentary and it's so important to read the full word of God and in Jonah 2 2 <clears throat> it says that he cried by reason of his affliction to the Lord and he was in the belly of the, the whale the fish for three days and out of the belly of hell and you heard my voice and and the the belly Jonah thought he was going to die. So even when we are at death's door, people, even when we are at death's door and we knock and we plea our, our cause with God the Father through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, when death's door is knocking and we plea our cause before God, he will open it. He will spare our lives. So to those who have been given death sentences, you pray and you stand on this scripture that says, I cried by reason of my affliction to the Lord out of the belly of hell, and you heard my voice. Amen. The door, knock at that door and it shall be opened. Even at the door of death, God will answer and open the door and make a way out. And if he's opening that door of death, what is on the other side? Life and life abundantly, people. Believe what it is written. It is not me. It is the word of God that is saying this. And then Jesus goes on. And that's a big old thing to take. And just, okay, let's move on. But that's how wonderful God is. I got more gold nuggets for you people out there. And this is what Jesus says. How many of you are so evil? And yet if your son came and asked you for food, you wouldn't give him a stone. So all these things that God is saying he's giving us. He's, he's saying, you, even though you are evil and your son and or your children 
or someone comes to you and asks you for food, you don't give them a stone. Now, I want you to think about this, how much more that the Father who is perfect, when we ask of him that he wants to give to us. Now, that's the end of this portion of chapter 7. So when you go asking God, and you go seeking God, and you go knocking at that door, it is proven time and time and time again that our God is faithful. He's a faithful God. He's a loving God, but he tolerates no evil. He will not tolerate evil. He will not bless you if you are disobedient. He is not going to go against himself. He is not a man that he should lie. And God's ways are way higher than ours. And his thoughts are higher than ours. So in that, we glorify and we give honor and we give praise to this God of ours. Because we know in our self, through the impartation of his Holy Spirit, that this is truth. His word is truth. So that is our chapter 7, partial chapter 7 today. And we'll see, like I said, get your baskets out. And let's see what else, what other good gifts God has for us. Amen? Silver and gold I have not. But such as I have, in the name of Jesus, rise and be healed. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day, people. Enjoy the day. Enjoy your walk with the Lord. Walk and talk with your Lord. Have some time with Jesus. Say your whatever it is that is, is happening in you. Have your talk with Jesus. And you are going to see that, that heaven, all heaven, is listening to you. And they are watching you. And God is going to do a great and marvelous thing in your life. Amen. Have a blessed day. Share my page. In Jesus' name. Amen.